So, uh, this turned out really nice. For those of you that are unfamiliar, this is my latest project. It's an Eang personal digital assistant device made for taking notes, scheduling, and productivity. I've really been trying to simplify my technology use using dedicated electronic devices that serve a distinct purpose and are free from distractions. For me, I personally use a flip phone, um, and I wanted a dedicated notebook device for jotting down quick thoughts, notes, and stuff like that. And this is my answer to that problem. You can see some of the features of the device being shown off in the background, but this project is far from done and I'll probably be updating it in upcoming videos as well. That being said, if you're interested in the electronics part of the video, I'll put that link below. Um, that was one of my previous videos, I think two videos ago. Um, and yeah. Waking the device from sleep, you can see that we're prompted with some options for apps to run. Hitting the one button brings us to the text editor, which is the main function of the device. Here I'm showing off that hybrid e-ink and OLED tech that I've been developing for the last few months. And you can see it works pretty well in a handheld form factor for typing. Leaving the device on for a while puts it in sleep mode, where the ESP32, OLED, and e-ink are all put in a low power mode to conserve battery. You can see that you first get a warning on the OLED, and then it shuts itself down and puts a little image on the screen. So, as I mentioned, this device is powered by an ESP32 S3, which is more than powerful enough for what I'm doing. And it also includes onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which are nice to have. We also have space for a power button on the side and a USB-C charging port on the bottom. And because I like repairability, I added an interchangeable battery to this device, though the battery should last quite a while, as the device consumes very little power. Sticking a nice, gorgeous, non-proprietary USB-C cable in the charging port, you get a nice amber charging indicator, which will turn off when the device is fully charged. And of course, the device works seamlessly when switching from battery to wall power. In the Notes app, text is inputted easily through the built-in keyboard, and the keys feel just the right size so they aren't too cramped or hard to press. And my custom keyboard design process seemed to have been successful because the typing is extremely quiet so you can use the device practically anywhere. I've also added some nice software features like FN and Shift indicators and a program I'm calling File Wizard for saving and loading text documents. You can see a list of all my files here and when you hit the corresponding button you can load the file to edit. You're prompted to save the current document, then the selected file is opened. You can also create new files here by selecting an empty slot and entering a name. And you can see that the new file name is shown at the bottom and a clean file is opened. If you guys want to learn more about how I did this, I'm going to put the code in the comments through a GitHub link. So you can check down there and take a look if you're interested. Before I get into how I made the Epic Clear Shell and put all of this together, I'd like to mention the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. JLC PCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. The ordering process is super easy. Just upload your Gerber file and in a couple clicks, you'll have a quote for your order. Thanks to JLC's large scale production line, you can get one to eight layer PCBs starting at just $2. JLC also provides really high quality and reliable PCBs with a rapid turnaround time, which is great for hobbyists. I've personally been using their services for years and I can say nothing but good things about them. Right now you can enjoy $30 off your order with a coupon and enjoy top quality six layer PCBs for just $5. Thank you for listening to the sponsor segment and go check out the link in the description to learn more about JLC PCB services if you're interested. Anyway, let's get into how I made this thing. I started with a design in Autodesk Fusion and developed the parts for the shell of the device. As you can see, there was a lot of iteration that went on here. Um, this part is kind of the bottom frame of the device that holds everything together. So this was definitely the most involved part of the model. And once I had all these individual parts designed, I could create an assembly to test the fit of the parts together. KeyCAD's 3D model export tool came in really handy here because I could simply generate the 3D model for my PCB and import it into Fusion to get a really good idea of how the plastic parts would fit with the PCB and vice versa. Also, 
I'll talk about how I made the buttons in a minute, but if I take them out of the model, you can see all of those kind of push button um, dome switches underneath. As I mentioned, I ordered these parts in clear resin from JLC and they turn out really nice. The website mentioned that they might have some air bubbles or blemishes in them, but I haven't seen any noticeable bubbling or anything like that. I did have to sand a couple of the parts on the hinge in order to get them to fit together properly, but that was no big deal. I just love the look of this clear resin. It reminds me of games consoles from the 90s and early 2000s that were popular when I was younger, and I, I just miss when products gave you a peek at their inner workings. It was so awesome. I was really worried about the tolerancing on that battery door, but when I threw a battery in, it fit perfectly and the door even had a nice click. The top e-ink screen was applied with a bit of double-sided tape, and the PCB was sandwiched between the backing plate and the screw spacer and secured with a few M2 screws. Next was the question of the buttons. I knew they needed to be flexible, and at first I planned to 3D print them in flexible filament, but JLC PCB doesn't offer flexible resin printing, and traditional FDM fle flexible printing wouldn't provide the detail I needed for the letters that are embossed in the keys. So I had the idea of using a resin 3D printed mold to cast silicone buttons um, in kind of a membrane pattern. I liked silicone because it was safe, easy to work with and cheap to buy, so I figured I'd give it a shot. So this is the mold that I designed in Fusion. I simply took the model for the buttons and cut it out of a solid block to create a negative. This way the silicone could be poured in and the buttons could hopefully be easily peeled out at the end. I initially tried using a type of silicone that I bought at Walmart made by Elmer's. Yes, that Elmer's. And although it was really easy to mix, pour, and had a quick setting time, it was full of bubbles and way too soft to pull out of the mold in one piece, so that wasn't going to work. Um, so after that, I tried to use some nice two-part silicone that I found on Amazon, which worked a lot better and had a longer working time since it would take about four hours to set instead of just one. The silicone was also quite a bit stiffer than the Elmer stuff, and so that worked better for getting it out of the mold in one piece. The Amazon silicone also has this nice uh, pink color, which is kind of fun. Um, and the Elmer's one had kind of like a bubbly, bad, clear color. With the button membrane finished, I could finish the assembly of the device with a few M2.5 screws. During the time when I was waiting for the 3D printed parts to arrive, I was working on the software of the device. It has a few main features that I've kind of already showed off, including a home screen, uh, where apps can be selected, a text document editor, and a very basic file system. The entire project is written in C++, and I used Arduino IDE because I find it easiest to work with. I won't go into detail in this video on the code, but I'll leave it below in the GitHub if you're interested in looking at how I did that. It's also worth mentioning that I plan to add more software features to this project soon. It's kind of basic and um, I kind of want to add more things like maybe a, a task scheduler kind of thing or a calendar or something like that um, and connectivity so that you can wire it up to a computer and transfer your files onto the computer or transfer files onto the device. Um, so stay tuned for that. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye.